This problem has to do with a study that took place at the local Quickie Mart and it's a connection with trying to see if there's any difference in genders as far as their preferences for squishies go. So a tally of 500 randomly selected customers is kept. 310 of those customers happen to be male and of those 78 purchased a squishy. The remaining 190 customers were of course female and of those 38 purchased a squishy. So the first part just asks, is there evidence at a 5% level to conclude that males are more likely uh, than females to purchase a squishy? All right, so our null hypothesis uh, looks like this. So the null hypothesis is that uh, P1 minus P sub 2 is 0. Okay, and for the purposes of what we're going to do, why don't we go ahead and let population 1 uh, specify the, the male proportion and P sub 2 will be the female proportion. So given that, our alternative hypothesis is P1 minus P2 would then be greater than 0, right? The question is, is the proportion of males bigger than the proportion of females? If you interchange the P1 and the P2 for genders, then the alternative would just look like P1 minus P2 less than 0. A little work either way. All right, well, let's see here. For our uh, sample, P1 hat, that was, what, 78 out of 310. And that turns out to be about 0.252. P2 hat is 38 out of 190, and that's actually, actually exactly equal to 0.2, one fifth. And then the other thing we're going to need, if we look down here at the test statistic, this is p hat, the pooled proportion. So p hat is what we get if we combine the two together. So 78 plus 38 divided by 310 over 190. 310, I'm sorry, 310 plus 190. And so if we do that calculation, it turns out to be 0.232. Okay, the reason we can pool here is because under the null hypothesis, the proportions are the same. So the philosophy is, well, if the populations really behave the same way, why not just combine them all together into one proportion? So that's what we're doing here. All right, so what we do now is we've got this complicated looking test statistic, but really it's just going to be a bunch of numbers. We just have to plug everything in and be careful with the calculations. So P1 hat is 0.252. P2 hat is 0.2. Take that and we're going to divide by Let's see a little more room here. Okay, the pooled proportion, so 0.232, and then multiplied times 1 minus 0 0.232, 0 0.768, and that gets multiplied by 1 over n1, so that's 1 over 310, plus 1 over n2, 1 over 190, and again, all of that underneath the square root. Be careful when you do the calculations. If we crunch the numbers, it turns out we get a value of z equal to 1.337. Okay, so our alternative hypothesis is in the upper tail. Zero, this is z. So the p-value we're looking for here will be that area right there. So you can use Excel. We've done that enough times, so I won't bother to show that. Instead, I'll just report the news. It turns out p is equal to about 0.091. Okay, not an especially small p-value, and in particular in this case, we're asked for a 5% significance level, and since p is bigger than that, that means we do not reject H0. Okay, in other words, we don't have enough evidence to conclude that the likelihood of women ordering squishies is any different than the likelihood of men ordering squishies. All right, so that takes care of the first part of this question. The second part asks for a confidence interval. Okay, specifically, we want a 95% confidence interval for the difference between the squishy purchasing proportions of females and males. All right, so confidence interval formula looks like P1 hat minus P2 hat plus or minus Z star, and then times this complicated standard deviation term. So P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat over N1, then plus P2 hat, 1 minus P2 hat, all over N2. 
So with confidence intervals for differences, we don't pool proportions. Because in this case, we don't know what the difference in the, in the two population proportions are. So it doesn't make sense to pool in that case. For hypothesis testing, if we're, our hypothesis is that the proportions are the same, then pooling does make sense. All right, so let's see. If we plug all this stuff in here, what do we get? So we get, uh, we have 0.252 minus 0.2. So that's just that part there plus or minus. Now Z star for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. You can verify that with Excel if you want. Or just take my word for it. All right, P1 hat is 0.252. Uh, 1 minus that, 0.748 divided by 310. And then plus, this is going to be tight here, 0.2 times 0.8. Whoops, sorry about that over 190. It fits okay, I guess. All right, the difference between these two is 0 0.052. Plus or minus this part, when the dust settles after doing the calculation, turns out to be about 0 0.075. So this leaves an interval with a negative lower endpoint, minus 0 0.023 at the lower end, and 0.127 at the upper end. This isn't too surprising, given what happened with the hypothesis test. It's not shocking that zero, indicating the possibility, at least the two proportions are the same, is actually part of the interval here. So we could leave it as decimals or else write this as minus 2.3% at the lower end and 12.7% at the upper end. And again, what this confidence interval does is gives us an estimate for the difference in the two population proportions.